I'm going to do a couple of problems here. Uh, one I'm going to talk through and one I'm actually going to do or do on, on the paper here. So you've got a particle that's traveling through a liquid. So think about this. One of the things that when we're dealing with dynamics is we start thinking of other dynamic problems that were going to happen. So typically we start with statics, then we get fluid dyna or dynamics, which is what we're doing now. Then you can go into more classical mechanics or fluid mechanics, and we start complicating things a little bit. So I thought this would be a good problem to start with so that we can really bring in how we wanna, wanna look at this, this problem. So we've got a tube that's filled with a liquid and we have a particle that's moving through that tube. So we're going to assume that everything is there on the particle and we're gonna allow it to drop through the tube. Now, based on our measurements, we've been able to see that the velocity of this particular particle, we can actually write its motion as the velocity is equal to 100 minus our position, and that's just gonna be in millimeters per second. We wanna determine the particle's acceleration when it reaches a position of 75 millimeters, and we wanna know the distance the particle travels before it stops, as well as the time needed to stop the particle. So this is a great problem to look at our dynamics and look at our different equations. Now, when we were doing these problems before, we would look at our kinematic equations, but now it makes more sense to look at our kinematic equations slightly differently. One of the kinematics equations that we wanna look at, if we look at our equation options, we know that we have acceleration is equal to our derivative of velocity with respect to time. We also know that we could actually derive this one that acceleration times our um, differential in position is equal to velocity times our differential of velocity. And we also know that we have velocity is equal to our, I'm gonna put my glasses down, is equal to ds dt. So we have a variety of options that we want to look at. But if we want to play with this one, this one is going to help us address our first problem. But remember, we don't have to do things in order. So let's look at this one here. The distance the particle travels before it stops. We actually have that information right away because we're told that v is equal to 1,000 or 100 minus S. So let's rearrange this and solve for S. So S is going to equal 100 minus R, or we're gonna set this, oops, sorry, let's do it this way. We're gonna set our velocity equal to zero, which is equal to our 100 minus S. S is gonna equal 100, and this is in millimeters. So we didn't necessarily have to do anything complicated in order to do this part of the problem. But let's go ahead and look at our particle's acceleration at, at this particular point. So we can rewrite this. Our acceleration is equal to V, 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 S, correct? So we've got that part. So we can actually look at this and if we do our dv ds of our 100 minus s, we know what that is. That's equal to minus 1. So we can put this in here as our 100 minus s times minus 1. We now get that particular item that we get s minus 100 but when S is equal to 75 millimeters, we're gonna get a minus 25 millimeters per second squared because we're told that, that this, will, this will all work out to give us our millimeters per second squared. So we've already got this here. And that negative means it is a deceleration. So you already get that particular piece. 
So that is a different way to look at the problem. It actually is a little quicker than if we were to try to do this problem and our general physics manner of doing the problem. So this gets us that part. But let's look at the last one, the time needed for the particle to stop. So this one looks a little different. So we're gonna use our velocity is equal to our derivative with respect to time of our position. And we're gonna rearrange it. So we're gonna get our position on the one side and we're gonna get our dsv. And now we get the ds divided by our 100 minus s. We're gonna do our integration for zero to t when it's actually going to stop. And we know that it's gonna stop when it reaches 100 and where it starts and we get our ds 100 minus s. Okay, now we have to do that integral. So I wanna point out something because this is where our, our resources come into play. And so in the back of your dynamics text, you have some really good um, useful appendices. And one of those appendices is our series of integrals and our integral tables. So we've got a value 100 minus b, which is a minus one, and we can actually utilize this particular integration table so that we don't necessarily have to go to all those tricks and tips that we had learned prior. So let's go ahead and do that. So now we're going to get our time is equal to minus the natural log of 100 minus s as we go from zero to 100. And when we actually look at this, this is going to ultimately be infinity, which is a kind of an interesting result. But if you think about it, you know, as this gets approaches, 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 it's going to get that distance down and down and down. But that's where we're going to be looking at the problem. So again, it's a nice way to start introducing fluid dynamics into our situation here. And we can look at, look at the problem as well. So let's do another example. And this time I'm just gonna kind of talk through the example. So we're gonna start with a particle that's moving along a straight line and it's subject to a deceleration. So again, if it's a deceleration, we know that it's gotta be negative. So even though I didn't write the problem down initially correct, we know that that deceleration, and sometimes they may do that, or they may say it's subject to an acceleration and they give you the negative and that negative gives us the fact that it is a deceleration. So we're told that the deceleration is gonna equal negative two V cubed meters per second squared. Now, the interesting thing here is that means that this two is gonna have units in order to make this work out. So our velocity is in meters per second, so we know that in order for this to work out, our unit of two has some strange, strange units. We want to know that if we're given our initial boundary conditions, we're told that the initial velocity is eight meters per second. We're starting at an initial position of 10 meters. And this is at time is equal to t equals zero. And we want to determine the velocity and position when we hit four seconds. So again, we're gonna look at our equation options. We've got these equation options, just like we showed in that, in that particular liquid problem. So we can start with this. We're gonna use, again, we're gonna use this particular equation option as it's gonna be the one that's the most useful to us. And so we're gonna go from 10 to our position. We go from A to V and we go through our integration and we're gonna get an equation that looks like this. And once we finally go through that, we're gonna do a little bit of algebra to get what our ultimate velocity is. So there's our ultimate velocity. But remember, we wanna know our position. So now we gotta go through a second step. So this time we're gonna use this form of our equation. So here's the equation that we wanna utilize. That gives us this. Then we go through our arithmetic and ultimately we're going to solve this for when t is equal to four. You're going to go through and actually use our quadratic equation to solve for the problem. 
So it does give you a way to work through the problems, do a little bit more step-by-step, -step, and gives you some different examples of how to attack, attract these problems.